Good evening and welcome to Roundtable. Today we have with us Professor Malik Ranasinghe. Good evening, Professor. Good evening. And he is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Moratua. So, Professor, now when you say the Vice Chancellor of uh, University of Moratua, actually it is uh, something that everybody respects. So, how did you get to this position? What uh, I mean, it must have been a long journey. So, what are the milestones in your life? Uh, that's an interesting <laughs> question. Uh, basically, I graduated from the University of Moratua. Uh, it, I think it was in 1983. I joined the university in 84. Uh, I went for my PhD in, in 85 to Canada on a Canadian Commonwealth Scholarship. Uh, I obtained my PhD in 1990 and returned immediately back to Sri Lanka, where, as usual, I was appointed as a senior lecturer. Uh, and that's where my journey started at the University of Moratua. I did my normal things, the teaching, the research. In 2000, I became the head of civil engineering. And in 2001, I became the dean of the faculty of engineering. And in 2005, I became the vice chancellor of the University of Moratua, 2005 November. So since then, I have been the vice chancellor. Uh, what we try to do at the University of Moratua is we get the best students in this country in the mathematics stream. Uh, so it, it's actually a real pleasure to teach the students. What we try hard is to make these students uh, the best they can be and and we like to call them world class graduates right. meaning well, I, that's exactly meaning, what i wanted to uh, ask you uh, that when they finish their degree program they can and when they join any postgraduate program they can compete equally or better than graduates who come from international universities it is something we have been doing always but we want to be very precise about it that our graduates believe that they can do it and and our students are good enough and they are to, to perform at that level. So uh, the idea of the world class graduate is that that they are not second to anybody That's anywhere right. in the That's world right. and to get them yeah. believing in that concept. Right. And because you know as you know uh, compared to a lot of the, the so called world class universities our facilities are limited but within the limited facilities we get very good students and it is our job the academic and the non academic of the university staff to help the students to achieve the best that they can be and, and we have been trying to do that. Right, Professor. So there it is also the University of Moratua is known to be the only university of technology in Sri Lanka. Right. Am I correct? That's and right. So why do you call it the only university of technology? Is it because of the faculties? Uh, that the focus is technology. Like uh, two-thirds of the university is engineering. Seventy percent of the student population is engineering. Then we have a faculty of in architecture, which is the oldest fac one of the oldest faculties. And recently we set up the faculty of information technology. And our focus has been on, on working with those areas that are very science and technology related. Right. And then also, can you talk, uh, consider your university as an entrepreneurial university? Is it an, because that is the, uh, actually the key term and key frame or the key concept in the world now, if you look at the world, the entrepreneurial university concept. Right. So can we call the University of Moratua an entrepreneurial university? We would like to call ourselves entrepreneurial. Uh, when we say entrepreneurial, there's lots of definitions. Our definition of an entrepreneurial university is what we have at the university is intellectual capital. And we, as a university, must convert this intellectual capital into business opportunities. And that we try hard to do it. Uh, when, say for example, we have a very clear enterprise policy on how the university would go and do all these entrepreneurial activities. Uh, we, would, we would like to measure ourselves, say for example, if we are earning 50% of the recurrent grant we get from the government, 50% more from these entrepreneurial activities, then I think we can call ourselves an entrepreneurial university. So is it a definition coined by the university itself? It is just a benchmark that we have set ourselves to do and we hope to achieve that by 2015. Right. So in that context, uh, you are also looking at employability options for students because I just wanted to refer to this idea that uh, when it comes to the private sector, right. uh, there is a common uh, belief, if you may say so, that uh, sometimes the graduates from the local universities, I'm not specifically referring to the University of Moratua, but graduates from the local universities are not employable or they prefer international graduates or graduates from other private institutions. Right. What can you say to this common belief? Right. I, would, I would also like to think it's a common belief. Because it's not the reality. Because if, if you look, look around our, our country, all the great people in our country are graduates of our university system. 
you know, ev everybody, if you, with what, except for a few, today all the eminent people have come out through the university system of this country. So they, are, they have been employable and I believe our graduates are still employable. Uh, now when we talk about employability, it is not, it, to an extent, it is the responsibility of the university but it is not the total responsibility of the university. Why do you say that? Because for four years we have a student. The industry has the graduate for the next 35 years. It is the, the main resource of that industry is this graduate. So, uh, so therefore the responsibility to help in the universities to produce uh, employable graduates also lies with the industry. And what we want is industry to come in and work very closely with the university, discussing with us, telling us how to do it, uh, correcting us if you are wrong, but also supporting us to make these employable graduates. So what you are saying is that there has to be a strong partnership with the industry and the university Definitely. itself. Definitely. And that's where the University of Morocco has succeeded. We have always, I mean I say from about the year 2000, 2001, we have been working very hard at, at this, telling industry that in doing this thing it's not an independent thing. You know, for, for example, the common perception in industries, if you ask them about a graduate, what is normally said is, you know, they, they don't have the knowledge, skills and maybe the attitude that the industry is looking for in a graduate. Now if you ask us in the universities, what we, our perception tends to be that industry doesn't understand the true capabilities of the graduate. So what I told you about wha how the industry thinks, the university system also thinks the same way about the, uh, the uh, industry. Indu that industry doesn't make the, do the best to get the, you know, do enough to get the best out of the students or the graduates. So therefore, when you work together, it's, it's not an independent process. We are both, the industry and the universities are dependent on each other to be able to produce a graduate that is useful to the country. Because if you, have, if you take a step back, all of the universities in this country are state funded. And our first responsibility is to society, to produce a, a, a graduate who is very productive and useful citizen to this country. Then we also must realize Industry is another customer of us, if you want to look in that context, who would be our employers? So we have to also produce a graduate who is to an extent employable, not to say that he in, on day one can come and do all the work that a person with five years experience can do, but he must have the, the correct attitudes and, and the skills to an, to an extent that the industry can be happy with. And that's what we have worked very hard at the University of Moratua. That is something that all universities in Sri Lanka are working very hard because we have a monthly meeting of the vice chancellors where we discussed very extensively about this issue. It is not something that we are not cognizant. We are very concerned and we are working very hard at it. Now, uh, Professor, now you know that, uh, like as you said, University of Moratu has reached that particular level. But uh, when you said that all the vice chancellors of the other universities are speaking about this. But in your opinion, uh, what is the state of the other universities when it comes to the employability of their graduates? And to what extent have these universities established strong rapports and connection with the industries? Uh, fairly good, uh, very well. For example, one of the things that we all the universities are planning to do is do an annual tracer study of the employability of our graduates. Now, we were surprised. For example, I know at University of Kalania, there's a common perception that the arts faculty graduates might not be employable. But when they did a survey of their humanities, or the, the linguistics graduates, they were 100 percent employed. Because today, the, the graduates with language skills are very important to the private sector. And I know the vice chancellor at the University of Kalania is very happy about it. So when it comes to the University of Morito, Professor, what has been like the employability rate and also the employability pattern across uh, the different faculties? Faculty. Okay, uh, what we did is in 2005, uh, we got the UGC, we invited the UGC, uh, UGC to do a, a survey on our employability of the graduates. It was actually done by the, my predecessor, Professor Dayant Vijay Sekhar, he invited the UGC and the, the uh, Dr. Kotachi, who was the the U UGC uh, econometrics or statistician, he, she did the study for us and he found that our employability at that time was about 5 percent. Uh, three months after the final exam, not graduation, three months after the final and we were quite happy with it and that became my benchmark because I became the vice chancellor in 2005 to see how we were progressing. We did it again in 2008-2009. 